Hi, today I want to talk about the color contrast feature. It's a feature that I think sometimes gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. There are quite a few features in, in Sage Light that do some pretty powerful things, and the color contrast is one of them. And how you get to it is you go to the filters and effects and you hit color contrast. And then you have all of these controls right here. For the purposes of this demonstration, because I, I get kind of um, a little trapped in this 1280 by 720 screen because it's very small vertically. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to get to it from the menu uh, function. And so when you get into the color contrast menu, what, a, what you have is you have a number of controls. You have the shadow controls, the highlight controls, and the contrast controls. And what the shadow controls do is they control the tint of the shadows and, and likewise the highlight controls control the tint of the highlights. So when I move the shadow color, it deeply tints in the shadow areas more than the highlight areas. Whatever color I have selected, it defaults to red. And then I can move the slider around, the color slider, and you'll see that it changes to whatever color I have that's underneath the slider handle. Similarly, with the highlight color, what I can do is I can move this slider out, the strength slider out, and then as I move it around, you'll see that it moves to the color and more in the highlight regions that I have selected on, under the slider. So when you move the controls together, what it does is it changes the highlights and the shadows. And what you can do is you can select different colors for each area. And you can see already we're getting some interesting effects here, depending on how much strength we put into the highlights and how much strength we put into the shadows. And so as, as I move it along, I get some interesting effects. And I can uh, use the same color for the highlights and the shadows, or I can use contrasting colors or different colors. Now there are some other controls here, the contrast and, and the shadow brightness. And what that does is, as you can see with the highlight control, it really washes out in these highlight areas and similarly if I don't have any highlights you can see that it really tends to want to deepen the shadows and so what I can do is I can move the shadow brightness to brighten or deepen the shadows and when I have the highlights out I can use the contrast to bring down the highlights if, if I use in conjunction with the shadow brightness you can see that I can really do a powerful tinting effect here so if I want to tint I would tinting it yellow there or I can tint it red here and I can also bring out the shadow and I can bring out the shadow brightness and play with the contrast and so you can see I can really get quite a few different effects with this function. Let's say for example in this particular with this particular picture I want to do something that's kind of an old faded color picture. Well, I can use the color contrast for that but first I want to do one thing. I mean this is really what Sage Light is about. You can use this function but when you put functions together that's really where you find a lot of strength. You might have noticed that when I was tinting it, like for instance, to go to kind of an old photograph style, I can do kind of a bluish shadowy area and a uh, yellowish highlight area. And you can see that it looks pretty nice. It's pretty, um, it's pretty interesting. And you can certainly use that for, for a lot of things. But for kind of a faded effect, you can see that this red, is, since it's such a powerful color, is standing out. And so what I can do is I can go into the quick, back to the quick edit mode, and I can just click on the red area. And for this, I'm going to want to do the uh, just do fine selection. And what that does is it does kind of a finer grade mask. And then I can bring out the range. And then with this particular mask, since all I really want to do is I want to reduce the red as I click edge mask. So it's just really masking all the red in the car. And so what I can do is I can, say I can up the saturation or I can decrease the saturation. What I want to do is I want to decrease the saturation that's more in line with the rest of the picture. And so once I've done that, what I can do is I can go back into the color contrast and set my controls and that way the red isn't so glaring. This doesn't happen in all pictures, just this particular picture, but like I said that really shows kind of the power of you know being able to use multi-functions or, or, or more than one function in stage light to create an effect. So in this particular case you can see that it looks pretty interesting. Even if I didn't want to go for an old faded effect I already have a really good effect here then I can use it with other tinting controls or I can actually save this and then come back into the color contrast. But let's just say we want to go for something that looks a little antique-ish here, or at least kind of old, maybe like an old newspaper or something like that. I can, I can do a lot of things. I can, like I said, I can, I can brighten these areas, I can darken these areas, so I can really bring it out here if I want to, or um, 
make it very contrasty, but here I want maybe right there. That looks pretty good to me. And so what I can do is I can also use some of the blending modes in Sage Light now. What I can do is I can go to the Vintage function, for example, uh, which is right here, and then just accept it as is. I can play with the controls if I want to, but I'm just going to go ahead and accept it as is. And what I can do is I can use some of the blending functions in Sage Light. And in this particular one, what I can do is I can, I have the image I just created, the vintage image, and then I have the one that came before it, which was the one I used the color contrast on. And so what I can do is I can just mix them like this if I want to. But one of the really, the most powerful mode for mixing tends to be the overlay mode. And so what I can do is I can mix them, and you can see it, it's really just a good mix of the vintage picture and the contrast picture. But since I tinted it a little yellow and a little bit blue in the shadows, now it's starting to take a bit of an older look. And then I can go ahead and adjust the shadows and highlights to where I want them to be. I think the red is still a little bright for me, so I can go ahead and I can go ahead and do the masking again. Again, I want to click the fine selection mode and then the range and then edge mask and whatever gets gets whatever gets is fine, but I'll go ahead and do that. And I think that the red, what I might want to do is add just a touch of yellow to just the red while I have it masked, maybe even bring out a little bit more saturation. And so there you can already see that we have a really an interesting picture going on here, starting to look older. We can do a couple other things while we're here. We can go ahead and we can add a, um, a vignette. And you can move around the center of the vignette, but for this type of picture, the center is fine. But we can also add a little contrast to make it look a little more realistic. So we can bring it out and make it look like it's a little more faded on the edges. And then another thing we can do as well is we can add noise just to give it a little bit of grain. And I don't know if it'll come through on the video, but... And so there's one example of what we can do with a color contrast. It's a pretty powerful function. And now what I want to show you is some toning effects that you can do with it to make a picture, you know, as opposed to the high-end toning where you really make a picture look very different, you can also use it for toning to make a picture look very artistic. In this picture, we have a picture of a cactus plant. And what I want to do is I want to go back into the color contrast and then just do something very quickly. You can see it's a very yellow picture. It looks very nice. It's, it's uh, fine as it is, but let's play with it a little bit. So what I can do is I can bring the shadows down a little bit. And I can, as you can see, it's really making it kind of a much cooler picture. And so what I can do is I can also bring the brightness up and I can play with the contrast to really just bring out the, the details. And so already I've got something that's quite a bit different than than the picture that we started with. And so if we look at it full screen, for example, let's put a little border on it, and we look at it full screen, it has definitely a different look to it. So what we can do is we can go back in, let's undo what we did here, and then what we can do is we can go back into the color contrast function, and we can look at it in a different way. We can add different colors to it, and again we can play with the contrast and the brightness control to get very different effects. You can see that uh, you can definitely do interesting things with it. I'm just doing this by hand. This is not um, anything that I've plotted ahead of time or anything. And, and that's really one of the main things behind Sage Light is the ability to do that. So here's a different picture here. So I'm just playing around. And uh, if we accept that, put another border around it, and then look at it full screen, you can see that we've really just toned this picture into something that's Definitely different, but also very interesting looking as well. Now what I want to show are some of the duo toning effects that you can do with, uh, with the color contrast feature. Let me get back to the original image, and then let me turn it into a uh, just a black and white image and get rid of the histogram there. And what we can do is, again, we'll go back into the color contrast. Now that we have a black and white image, we can really just get a nice duo tone effect going kind of a nice deep brown. And then what we can do is we can also use the shadow brightness and the contrast to just really bring it out. You know, black and white pictures, you know, you can make them a lot crisper than you can color pictures sometimes. And so there's a good example right there. Or and we can, again, select any colors. So we have a nice deep kind of older antique looking photograph there. Something more traditional, we can go for a really nice kind of deep cool blue, which looks pretty interesting as well. And so then if we accept that, then again put a border around it just to 
to the context and so we have kind of a deep blue there where we can also play with it a little bit in the uh, RGB controls as well. And so that's another thing that you can do with the color contrast. Color contrast is very good for, for making a duotone. Sageley has a duotone controls and they're more flexible, but the color contrast controls tend to be a lot more, they just have more raw power. And so as I, as I play around with these controls, you can see that I, uh, again, I have almost exactly the same picture I had when it was a color image, but this is starting with a black and white image. And so you can see that it's a, it's a pretty powerful feature. And so now what I want to show you is uh, some other toning aspects that you can do with color pictures, with the color contrast. So with this picture of this cat, we can go back into the color balance function, a color contrast, I'm sorry, color contrast function again. And what we can do is we can use some of the same controls. As a color picture, you can see that we can really tint it pretty easily into a lot of colors that really make it into a nice different toned picture. For example, this blue here looks nice, but also if we move over into maybe the yellows a little bit and tone it deeply, it looks very nice as well. And then if we bring the highlight color out, you can see that it really brings out the yellow. And then we can, again, we can use the contrast and shadow brightness controls to really help it out. So you can see we can really deeply um, tone this picture. But you can also see it retains a lot of the color in the original picture. There's still the reds here, and you can still see some oranges in, in, the, um, in the fur. And so it, it's nicely toned, but it's not just one color like it would be if you just wanted to tint it yellow. You really could do that here if you just brought them all the way out. But you still see some color in there, but it's just obviously more yellow, but you still see some of the reds and other colors in there. And so we can also switch colors in one area. Again, keep the highlight color being a different color than the shadow color. You can see that we can really get some interesting effects in here that are almost more like graphic art effects than anything else. And so you can really go from this type of effect, which is, like I said, more of a graphic art effect, to an antique effect, to really just toning your picture in a way that keeps it realistic, but it just has a nice tone to it. For example, using the blending functions again, let's say we, we like this blue right here, and then we accept that. But then we decide, well, if we look at the original, it's a little bit, it's a little dark. And you can also see if we look at the histogram here, and we look at the original versus what we just did, we've lost some data. We can use the blending modes again. We can just do edit and then undo brush. I'm sorry, not undo brush. Edit, uh, blend, undo image. And we can um, select which one we want to have is essentially the top layer. Whatever displays is the top layer. And so we want to take the original that we started with and then we can use various modes. In this case, before we used an overlay mode, in this mode we can use a screen mode. And what we can do is we can just blend it in. And you can see it gets pretty bright, but it also turns blue. We can then use the RGB controls to bring down what we did. Let me get out of fine mode here. And to bring it up and to tone it. And so you can see that now we have a real nice blue tone to it. And if we look at the original image, it just has a nice blue tone. And so now we can even bring up the saturation. And so, again, like I said, with a lot of the controls in Sage Light, or any editor for that matter, any, any editor that is a powerful editor, when you mix functions, that's when you start to see even more flexibility. The color contrast feature, I think, stands on its own. But then when you start mixing it with blending modes and other features, it gets even more powerful.